and very scary, creepy, perhaps uh, shocking. It's practically pristine. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. Dave K here today for some fun-filled foodie adventures in Cork and Carrigline. Today's adventure will be all about the tastiness to enjoy in this part of town. Maybe a couple of sights to see as well, but these will be shorter days, so I want to enjoy some delicious food with you. Check out different dining venues, let you know what I think, and enjoy the limited time that I have on those weekdays to be able to see the sights here. Today, I'm looking at the Bally Seed Cafe down here in Carrigline. It's a really cool town here in Carrigline. They've got this park for the kids. They've got all kinds of stuff, like the shopping center, the Little was right over here. I'm probably going to drop in Little after the cafe as well, have some groceries for the week, like some early breakfasts maybe. And then maybe we'll try an exciting, like the English Market, for example, later in this vlog. TBD. Let's go check out that cafe. While we're taking this walk to the restaurant, take a look at this part of town. Really relaxing vibes, beautiful places to walk along the water. Like, look at that walkway in there. That looks awesome. Wow. Maybe I'll do that at some point. It's a little warmer, perhaps. You've got the park, the playground there on our right, and a bunch of the food spots, including Little, right down that way ahead of us. Walking deeper into Carrigline, much more of a uh, downtown feel, if you will. These buildings are a little bit tighter together. We're gonna have to navigate, figure out exactly which turn we have to take here. You can see all kinds of little shops along the way. And here we are, the Bally CD Cafe Deli Bakery. I actually don't know what the menu looks like. I <laughs> couldn't find it online. So let's step over there and see what they're all about. This is cool. Please order at the till. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Got some help here. Breakfast menu right over here. So we've got our options. What I shall do is still TBD, but you can see the sandwiches through the vault here. They're very, very cool. Hey, good, thanks, how are you? I'm gonna do the Egg Royale. Please. Uh, I guess pumpkin spice latte sounds pretty good. Let's do that. I guess I'll try the warm spice. Why not? <laughs> see, see what that's about. So I went ahead and went all in here on mealtime. I've got the Eggs Royale, which is like a sourdough sandwich, sounds like, with smoked salmon, all kinds of cool stuff. And I was gonna get the pumpkin spice latte. They're out of pumpkin spice, so I'm doing warm spice. What warm spice is, I couldn't tell you. But they said it's kind of like pumpkin spice. It's Christmassy and not as sweet, so <laughs> I'll give it a shot. Let you know what we think here. Cool spot all around though. I love the cafe style feel. You know, the uh, just go up to the deli and order what you want. And then you grab a seat and they'll bring it to you, which is nice. Not sure if maybe I can find a quieter spot, but it's not bad. And I have moved to a booth in the back here. Hopefully this lighting is good. It looks decent. So we'll give it a shot. Let's know what we think. So we have our colorful water right here. Look at that with the orange in it. I love that. It's very, very nice. And it looks like it's a uh, half a liter, so I should drink that in about five seconds. And then we have the coffee, coffee, look at that. I am trying the lattes because why not, you know, the dining vlogs all about trying multiple options, sharing the experiences with you. We'll let you know, but it looks really nice. Look at that decorative, and it's quite a large size. You see my hand wraps around it, so seems like a good quantity considering the fact that, uh, you know, to me, the coffees at least seem uh, more expensive than like making it yourself or something. It's me and my money-saving mindset, but it looks really good. We'll let you know what we think. All right, hey. Cheers. Pictures. Forgot my pictures. All right, pictures have been taken. Cheers. Mm. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Warm spice. I think she described it well. Christmassy flavor. Um, I like it. You know, it's like a. Um, it is a latte. <laughs> It's like a, a cinnamony, kind of ginger, not ginger, but like a nutmeg style uh, latte. Nice, warm, warm spice, now we know. Have you heard of warm spice before? Is this an Irish thing? Or is it just like a David didn't know thing? And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the, is it Eggs Royale? Is that what we had called it? I believe so. You've got your smoked salmon in there, Irish smoked salmon. That's, that's the sort of things that excited me. I was like, oh, it's unique. You know, I've had the Irish breakfast. I was tempted by the Irish breakfast because, you know, that's the staple. But I figured I'd get something new, give it a shot. Coffee's good. Sandwich is most likely destined to be good here, I'll let you know. I don't even know how to dig into this thing. It's gonna, like, fall apart. I thought it was gonna be, like, a sandwich. We figured it out. Look at that yolk getting ready to pour all over the place. I usually like my uh, yellows pretty deeply cooked, but, you know, I gotta try the things 
the local way. When it, when it comes on a, like a Benedict type deal, I gotta do it, you know? Here we go, first bite. Mmm. Mmm. That is a nice combo of flavors indeed. That smoked salmon is fantastic, if you ask me. That flavor really pops in there, and I'm not sure I've had Irish smoked salmon before. Pretty sure that's what the menu said, but nice flavors on this one. Definitely an enjoyable dish. Based on this dish, would totally come back here and try maybe the standard Irish breakfast. It's not the cheapest place I've eaten by any means, but it's reasonable, I think, and the quality is quite good, not to mention it's convenient for me, so. Yeah, would definitely be somewhere I could see coming back to. The orangey water is a nice flavor as well, I've gotta say. Definitely a, a good quality breakfast venue. You know, I'm wondering now, was I supposed to try to close it up like a sandwich? <laughs> I'm not so sure, but I think that would have been tricky. Like, imagine taking a bite out of this, right? I'm gonna give it a shot. That worked out pretty decently, actually, but... Yeah, I like eating it with a fork and knife, too. Just cut off different pieces. If you were to ask me my least favorite part of this one, I would say... With the spinach, with the green vegetables. <laughs> These veggies aren't my fave. I don't know if it's just the flavor of them, how they're cooked, or, or maybe them in this sandwich, because I love like salmon, for example, fish in general, and eggs, <laughs> and sourdough. Not bad, and altogether, definitely a good sandwich. A good way to make me eat my veggies. Here's another thing I heard, which I thought was the case, apparently not. I thought they didn't do coffee over here. Maybe that's just a, like a UK thing, where they only do tea, they don't have, like really even have coffee. Or maybe that's just like an ancient thing. Or the old world, I guess I'm familiar with a very old world in my mind, in many ways. But yeah, they got a bunch of coffee options. And again, I guess we'll find out if that's a UK thing or not. But yeah, good, good options for coffee, and they have the teas as well, of course. Another one I was recommended by some locals, pizza and sizzle. Here, if you take a look at this menu, right outside the front door, Sounds delicious. I could definitely see uh, he eating all this good pizza stuff. I got a couple of little things here from the little grocery store. You can see teas, or snacks, let you know what we think. So I do have to say those danishes were tasty, but not enough for meal times, I'm realizing. So I need to grab some more groceries from little, and we'll see what kind of little stuff we can get. May as well try a few little things while we're here. How about that? Here we go, a couple of little things. Look at this, I even went discount shopping here. Ready-made pasta. We got the mince pies back there and some chicken. All this for under five bucks. <laughs> Our five euro, should I say. Another day, another delightful journey. Today, I am targeting those English markets as well as the Elizabeth Fort. If we get a chance, get to do some cool sightseeing of that fort area, you know, fortified architecture, as well as some more delicious food. English market's supposed to be amazing. Let's check it out. Check out this fountain here in Cork City, nice decorative feature as we're making our way. Welcome back to Cork City, where we'll be checking out the English market. Nice to be walking around town, take in all the sights here, look at the different options, but the market should be pretty close. There's a sign, English market right there, probably where we're going. Just along the street here with all these other shops, so maybe even hard to notice, is the English market of Cork here, and it looks like it's starting to rain slightly, so I need to switch to the just waterproof camera. Never mind, it's indoors. Take a look around at this English market. Really, really cool to see. I feel like, like a lot of markets we have in the States where you've got all your produce for sale. But I think we'll probably also find some ready-made meals and such. See what we can find. Still deciding. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's do let's do max mocha. Yep. I guess you all don't measure in ounces here, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> you don't know how many grams? It doesn't matter. I'm just curious. Hey. Good, thanks. How are you? I feel like I gotta try at least one here. <laughs> any, uh, any favorites? The spicy prawn looks pretty good. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. We'll try spicy prawn and maybe we'll come back too. Thank you. A few ready-made foods in this back section here, but mostly like produce. You can get some uh, sausages and all kinds of meats, apparently really good stuff. But I got this smoothie here, not bad smoothie, and a couple of sushi rolls I'm kind of walking around with while I go, just looking while I, uh, while I drink the smoothie. Seems like I found my way back to the fish section here. Oh my gosh, look at that, that's awesome. Really, really cool to see all kinds of delicious cuisine, whatever you might like to enjoy. So, nice to check out the English market here. The food was mostly groceries though. You know, you need to be able to refrigerate it and all that, so <laughs> not a whole lot for me here. That being said, nice to get some snacks. Got my sushi and I got my shake. Shake and sushi breakfast. Not bad, you know, not the most amazing shake or sushi ever, but decent, you know. I can see going back in there, grabbing some more food before the end of the day here, since I'm up here for a bit. But now, I'm gonna see if I can make it to Elizabeth Fort. And take a look at this beautiful statue out here. Kind of reminds me of that four apostles that we saw in Dublin. So, you know, same, similar feel in terms of that design there. Unveiled St. Patrick's Day 1906. Would you look at that? Nice to see the architecture here as we're making our way. A couple of other observations. Look at that cute little fish for the soy sauce. And I couldn't figure out how to open the wasabi. But beautiful Elizabeth Fort here ahead of us. Not far of a walk from the English market. Very, very nice. Making our way inside now. Again, slight rain, so we'll see how that plays out, and I'll find a bin here somewhere. Starting us off in Elizabeth Fort here, just on your left, past the loo, you have the bomb shelter. Take a look at this. Bomb shelter here. Wow, I mean, crazy. See this here, apparently Fort been around since the 1626, or even before that, I think 1600-something. Very helpful front guide here. Give us some information as we make our way. There's also audio guides. For three dollars guide maps i believe for or sorry euros uh one euro for a guide map or you just do the free walk around it yourself and, and see what you see but really really cool spot you know i'm already noticing so many differences between this one and the charles fort in that i don't think i saw a bomb shelter in charles fort very very interesting she talked about how the soldiers here destroyed cork it's, they burned down the city of cork in 1920 and so much more information Wow, really cool. To start us off in the bomb shelter, you can see this back area as we make our way inside. Walking through this other doorway on the opposite side here, you have, oh, look at this, the Elizabeth Fort, uh, what do you call this again? Hanging, uh, hanging thing where you put your head in. I don't know if it actually opens up, this one, but we have had a chance to do one of those where it opens up. You can uh, put your, you're in jail. What do you, what do you call this again? The, the ga galleys or something, something like that. You've got some soldiers. Oh, look, and all this information on the walls, like the way the fort was built here. If you want to take in some of that information, read the history. Battle for Kinsale. Oh, wow, okay. Go from up here down towards Kinsale. Siege of Cork. You've got the stairs to walk up. And oh, look at the numbers for the audio guides tour. These soldiers right here. Nice, nice start. Very, very cool. Again, very, very different from the Charles Fort with these different statues, with the bomb shelters. And I've heard it's a similar setup with like the star shape of the fort. So we'll see what that looks like when we get up top. I also switched over to the waterproof case in the event it kicks back to raining. Right now it stopped. So let us make our way up this first set of stairs on the right here. See how much we can get done in the bit of time that we have out here to enjoy it. Oh, these stairs are, are juicy. You can see, oh, more statues up here as well. The cannon up there. And you can see into the central fort. Apparently those two used to be guard stations. We can actually go in there, I'm told, on the left in that building. We'll be able to see what that was like, some prisons in there. And we got this view of the city. This is very nice as well. You know, this kind of reminds me of when we were up in the Guinness storehouse, we had a beautiful view of Dublin city. And from here in Charles Fort, a beautiful view of County Cork, of Cork city. Beautiful to see. Nice to be up here. And we can see around the fort ahead of us. So we'll be going on that way probably. Looks like there's a rail on that side as well. Lots of walking to be done. Look at this. You've got directions on how to fire a cannon from up here as well. Looking at the cannon, you can see this fine gent right here and another audio guide section as we continue 
to make our way upstairs onto the bridge. Not sure if that's what they called it, but it is a bridge, so we as well call it like it is. Am I right? And this spot has some great views as well around us. Hopefully the wind not being too loud for us. Looks like we're coming into another star section of the fort here. In this section, underneath the ridge, we can't get down there, but maybe if we're on the lower level, we can actually walk in there. You can see it's a wall, so you won't have any sort of views, but you can see what that would be like. You've got your North Cathedral and information as you go as well. Again, easy to, uh, to miss the little details, but if you look closely, you can read about such things. I do feel quite fortified from the city up here, looking down at them, doing their stuffs. We have the fort protecting us. Yes, indeed. Beautiful vantage point to see this perspective. The cathedrals around us, the daves behind us, and so much more. If we keep continuing our way around with this perspective, yes. Protected in our fort, indeed. The next vantage point looks like some cannonballs below us. We have a cannon up here at Station 5. And look at this beautiful view of the church in the distance. Wow, very nice. I'm not sure what's up with that church. If it's just something we can walk through as well. Uh, might be an active church. Wouldn't surprise me. But you have this view from the church side. At the fort here as well, with some construction going on in the background. Oops, and now we're facing down the barrel of a cannon. Making our way back downstairs into the fort, you have this fine gent who scared me for a moment because I thought he was real, holding a cannonball. That would not be so cool if it was a real gent just chilling there, holding a cannonball. Hold on to the handrails, though. That is a nice thing to hold on to. You have him sitting here, perhaps preparing to fire. And Brass Monkey. I gotta read Brass Monkey. Indeed, look at him over here with his items to maybe prepare a cannon for firing and oh look elizabeth fort timeline so 1602 fort of timber and earth erected was demolished in 1603 in protest of the ascension of king james you've got rebuilt as a star fort in 1624 1626 wow nice to read here and then siege of cork 1690 New replacement barracks in 1719. You've got a new south blocking wall in 1807. The Royal Irish Constabulary occupied the fort. And today, we are here. Just write that in. We are here. Yes. And then you have these cannonballs here. This underbridge section and some brass monkey. Interesting. So the tray was referred to as the monkey. Sounds like a particular tray to carry the cannonballs, Brass Monkey. Very, very cool to learn about. And you can read some names of people who were involved in the conservation of the fork in 2000, 2005. Very, very nice. Maybe I'll just hang out in this under section. Oh, the under section for a moment. And be dark and scary indeed. Walking along the next leg of the Elizabeth Fort, you'll see the back of this building. I believe we can get inside to a couple of those rooms. I think that's the same building. You got the church on that side and you have the rain falling above us. It's intermittent rain, so not too bad. This is unexpected and very scary, creepy, perhaps uh, shocking. I guess maybe not too shocking, but you know, you've seen Game of Thrones, maybe a similar concept. <laughs> maybe maybe not appropriate for some of our audiences here. But you have these, uh, these heads of gents on the pikes. Yeah, we'll probably probably keep that brief. And just keep moving on here. Upstairs we go. Yeah, it's probably not uh, probably not super. You know what we're going for, content-wise. So just moving on. Up the stairs we go, and I love the fact that it seems to be nice and light for us, even in these little passageways, which I would envision might be a little bit on the darker side, or cause some GoPro challenges. It does not seem so. We have viewpoint number seven over there, which will be beautiful. We can actually, oh, walk behind here. That's nice. Oh my gosh, those freak me out again. And you have this view inside the castle. Yes, making our way around now to point number seven. Looks like we have the church on that side. The walk through over there, a little step up. So be advised if you're taking that step, 
But this is the spot I think we really want the view of. So we can enjoy this perspective. A prime defensive position from our fort, perhaps. You've got the view of these homes below. Oh, look at those colors too. Nice pink, green, blue homes. And there's some uh, stuff going on in the background, the church over there. Another beautiful viewpoint to look around, even off that way in the distance. I wonder if this is our highest point yet on the fort. It might be because I can see a lot of the rest of the fort from up here as well. So that's, yeah, it makes me feel like we have a distinct advantage in this direction. And the woman at the front said, and I would have to agree, it's most definitely a well-maintained fort considering its age. Take a look in here. This part may be just slightly green, but otherwise it's practically pristine. Not as much that greenness as we saw at the Charles Fort and Definitely some different perspectives, some different aspects of a fort to see here too, which I like. Nice little variety for us. Down this way, on our right, we have lower into the fort. Looks like you got a little picnic bench. I was informed you can just bring in some coffee and such. Bring the coffee in here, so that's cool. Cool to know that those buildings inside, maybe get some work done, or office buildings or otherwise. Maybe for the employees. This little shed back here, not sure what that's about. And more. Back this way, I think we've made a full loop. We're at number eight here, point eight. And it's this little, I don't know, gutter looking thing. So maybe it's the gutters. This point number eight, how they operated back then. And we'll make our way inside next. Really, really cool to see. You got some more benches out here to enjoy some snacks and such. And we're going to make our way inside. Let's see what it looks like inside the fort. Indeed. Well, we're inside the fort, but inside the building, inside the fort, inside cork. So I was told the two buildings on the left, or the two spaces on the left, is what we can go see. But just to peek that way, it says staff only. So that must have been who we saw working. And we have the walls, women, water. I'm not even sure what that means, but let's take a look. Here we go. You can see a lot of information and history around us here about extraordinary lives and so much more. I'll have to read through this, but it's like a museum aspect, which is very cool to see in these two rooms here. In the first room as well, the fort was named after Queen Elizabeth I, who died two years after it was built. We have all kinds of history here over the years of the fort. This is a very cool room as well, and nice to read all of the facts around us. Wow, really, really cool to see the exhibit here with all of the information about the transportation of the women prisoners, the history of the fort, and the English in the fort as opposed to the Irish the progression of Irish and, and how this was one of the first locations where they were beginning to take their own control and develop their own government here. Really, really cool history throughout the fort and awesome to see that history and learn about the Ireland past as well. Really, really interesting. People getting sent to Australia for small crimes like stealing like some silverware, a spoon or, or something like that. Some very desperate people. So. Wow, tricky, tricky journey for some people, but at the same time, really, really cool to learn about the history and another great way to appreciate the world we live in now, right? How many luxuries that we have and the ability to be able to take care of ourselves and find what we want in the world and, and work and otherwise, the internet that can help us out. Look around us here, making our way to that. One more section that I did not get a chance to see is under this particular bridge. I just want to stand in there myself so that I can say that I've seen it all make sure I'm not missing anything. But these grates here are interesting as well. I'm not quite sure what these are about. I think she might have mentioned, uh, but maybe they're just grates for, uh, for viewing, you know, watching out, or maybe they are grates for waste. 
to get rid of uh, any, uh, to, to have any toilets, since they didn't have any toilets back in the day. I doubt they had too many of the porta johns. <laughs> so, cool to be in this space too. Look at this. The walls going up several floors around us, but then just wide open space above us. Not quite sure what this space would have been used for, but it's very cool to see and stand in here, just look around and get another view of the fort. And a really interesting route as I'm making my way towards the bus station so I can get to work this afternoon and this evening. Looking forward to sharing more of the fun with you, but would not have expected this kind of back stairways, back staircase, almost alley kind of thing. <laughs> it's been really interesting because there are a lot of small spaces, but at the same time, it's just a generally pretty comfortable place. You know, it feels pretty safe and all that. So I'm really glad we get a chance to check out so much of Ireland and to share it with you on this adventure. Great spot all around. Let's check out that bus. One other thing I was told I need to try is the coffee here from Little, but it seems like you need coins. Actually, Euro, <laughs> Euro coins. Not sure I can use my card. Uh, it doesn't seem that way. There's a scanner in there. So maybe it would work for that. I'm not sure. So we can try it. Try that. There have to be cups though too, wouldn't there? Oh, paper cup or own cup. Hmm. Paper cup. Yeah, I'm not sure about this, so I'll, I'll do it another time. And another thing I haven't done yet, the bird walk. You know, could always walk down that way to hang with the birds, feed them a little bit, but I think we can make that happen maybe tomorrow on our last day here. We'll see how that goes, but yeah, I want to make sure I rest and recharge tomorrow because <laughs> another big day, the day after that, for some travel. Oh yeah. One day more here in Carrigline today. Another day, another destiny. It's going to be a shorter morning this morning because I have to pack up all my bags for my trip tomorrow. I'm leaving Carrig Line to our next destination, which I'm excited to share as well. But I'm thinking I'm going to stop by Little for some breakfast and maybe some lunch today. Just have some groceries and maybe let you know what I thought of the other Little snacks. Most of the Little snacks were pretty solid. You know, I wouldn't call any of them amazing, but, you know, especially for the price. I'm like, nice to try, doesn't hurt to have. and great discount shopping deal. I was interested in those hot cross buns at Little, and they were nice. They had a nice cinnamon flavor to them. There was like a spice component going on, and not too sweet. You know, I feel like over here in Ireland, and probably a good chunk of this, I don't know, we'll see, they don't use quite as much added sugars as we do often, which I do appreciate. So those were nice, and we'll see what else looks good in the store today. All right, y'all, we went a little crazy at our last meal. We got the sweet chili chicken, we got the fruit tart, Big thing of orange juice, a couple different scones, and this big thing of pancakes. I figured this way I'll be covered for today, and tomorrow I'm gonna be on the road a bit, so I wanna have those snacks as opposed to having to worry about running into coffee shops and such. So if I can have some snacks on the go, that would help. And I'm looking at just under seven euro for all of this. Starting it off with a breakfast here, I've got the sweet chili chicken wraps and this chocolate and almond croissant, I believe 76 cents of a euro, and it's like 170, so. Not bad, pretty affordable breakfast, I think, for our stay. We gonna have it, and then we'll let you know what we think. I gotta say, this one's surprisingly good here. I'm getting pretty full, I feel like. I like the sauce on this one better than that fried chicken one, and I'm not even sure I'll have room for that almond croissant. May have to save that for the bus. I must say that chocolate hazelnut croissant was very nice. It had, it was almost like a Nutella on the inside, so that was nice. Overall, I'd say nice snacks from Little. Nothing crazy, nothing like particularly amazing snack-wise, but all good stuff. And I'm glad I had a chance to taste some deliciousness before we make our way to the next beautiful part of Ireland. I'll see you there. Well, this is probably a pretty good spot to tell you, since there's probably no wind noise under here. Thanks so much for helping me make it an amazing day beautiful to enjoy the Elizabeth Fort and other delicious dining in the Cork area. Don't forget to make your day an incredible day as well. Focus on the positive vibes, look for the silver lining in everything you do, and make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay informed of future adventures coming your way. This is just the beginning of the travel adventures. I know, Cork is almost done, Dublin is done, but there's way more exciting content ahead, just you wait. If you think this is thrilling, I'm planning something Particularly exciting, yes. Until next time, have an amazing day and play on. Check out, check out different vining.